Who was it who said that um, Schubert's music is sad when it's in minor keys and it's tragic when it's in major keys? <laughs> It's an amazing thing how, you know, it's a piece in C minor, and it, it arrives in C major, it brings no relief. It's even, it's another level of despair. Bravo. Beautiful. Really, very beautiful. Many things I loved in it. Um, I, so I think we have, at least in public, we have, we've had late Brahms, late Beethoven. This is the first time in the classes that we work on Schubert. For me, I, I think the, the, the most extraordinary element of these late pieces of Schubert, and this is already pretty late, not quite last year, um, is that you know he throughout his life has this lyrical gift which is you know second to none, yeah. in fact un, unequaled probably, uh, but and that's still there at the end. Mm -hmm. But alongside it is this sense of terror, yeah. or absolute terror, um, and they they they're just right next to each other, sometimes separated only by s seconds, mm -hmm. and. I think that you could emphasize the terror in this music more. Uh, for example, when all of these sections where you there's something there's something about this this um, insistence on that dominant pedal. Sometimes for ages it goes on. That to me has has such an ominous quality, which I miss slightly. And I think if you find you find that. Um, it's not even a balance, but that combination of those two qualities, yeah, yeah. then it, it, it becomes affecting in a way that's really quite unique. There's really nothing else in the music yeah, okay. like it. So that's, I think, what I'd like to focus yeah, on a little yeah. bit. And starting with the very first, I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary way to begin a piece, right? The mm -hmm. only other piece I can think of that's similar is you know, the Brahms C minor piano yeah. quartet, but that's at least the right note, yeah, you know, yeah. it begins, uh, it's a piece in C minor, because in the C, yeah. this instead, yeah. it's not in G minor, you know, we don't put you there, you know. Yeah. It's already away from home, right? You know, so I think that, the, that it, it launches the piece, it's, kind of, it's a blow of fate is how I hear it anyway. And it launches the piece uh, uh, on a path of, of terrible intensity. Mm, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's not so, I mean, their personalities are so different, but it's not so different from um, what we were just working mm. on in the Beethoven. Um, and just to say before you start, for me, um, one of the most significant aspects of this theme is how closed in it is on itself. It begins basically on the D, and it goes, well, half step up, yeah. only down, that much down, and then back. It's, it's, it's a claustrophobic theme. Yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, circling around mm -hmm. one note. And I'm, I, I think, therefore, the sound needs to be a little bit claustrophobic. I thought I, thought, I know that it is pianissimo, but I found the sound a little bit too uh, yeah, I see, yeah. I, I, flaccid, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah. I missed the sense of tautness in the okay, sound. Okay. Yeah. Daring. It's fine. It's fine. You know, I, I was. I, I always say this in master classes. You know, I've heard um, really great performances yeah. of the Hammerklavier Sonata that began. You know, but I have never heard a great performance of the Hammerklavier Sonata that began. You know, if, 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 if you cannot play a great performance with fear. You can yeah. play a great performance and make a mistake. Okay, you okay. know. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can possibly wait even longer. I uh, wouldn't. Okay. I don't think. I think the break was long enough, but I think the length of the note itself. I, I guess what I want is to feel you react to the terrible power of that note before going on. I mean, you know, it's always an interesting thing to think about. Before the piece begins, any piece, mm -hmm. there is silence. Right? Yeah. So this is a hell of a way to interrupt the uh, silence, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, if you think about all of the different ways a piece could begin, that, you know, we have nothing. There's no sound, no sound. We're all sitting in the room waiting for you to begin. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? 
I mean, it's 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 horrendous. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I know. I mean it seriously. I mean, it, it's it's horrible. It's a it's an expression yeah. of terror. Yeah. yeah. I think it's better. I, a couple of things. Yeah. I would like, first of all, when you have the three repeated Ds, yeah. the repetition has to have some sort of significance. You know, you cannot play three of them in a row in the same way. There has to be a reason. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, when you finally, after one, two, three, when you move away from it, yeah. there has to be some sort of sense of relief to have yeah. moved on. And then afterwards, if you can really show us the contours of you go down, and then back up, and then, yeah. So just, it, it's not, a, it's a very subtle thing. Again, there's, there could almost not be less motion, but you have to sort of just show us yeah. the hills and valleys. I think part of it has to do with really f following through with each note all the way to the end. Again, thinking about its middle and its ending before playing the next one, rather than releasing them easily. The difference to be more uh, stark. That first of all, you have a single line without harmonic support against full chords mm -hmm. suddenly, and you have uh, basically slur or dots under a slur, and now staccato. That there should be the feeling of the the the, the grounding and the backbone of the theme arrives yeah. with this repetition, and it makes it somehow almost even more grim. Mm -hmm. That, you know, there were certain, there were questions about it when it came alone, but when you have, <sighs> then we know, okay. now we know, you know. One more time from here. Staccato, but I think that somehow the, the existence of the chords uh, means that there has to be somehow more solidity than there is here. And one of the ways in which you express that solidity will be through articulation. It, it's short, but there's nothing flippant about it. It's not, it's not light in any way. Yum, ba bum, bum, bum. Just from there is fine. is very important because the first phrase open ended right and now we get the answer you know Beautiful. yeah so can you Immediately when you begin this, can you feel the progression? <laughs> that it's reaching up yeah, and yeah. out and mm -hmm. towards something. There's the, you know, in a, a piece that begins in the most um, austere and um, hopeless fashion, yeah. there is the, 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 the suggestion of major, right? Mm -hmm. So something in the sound has to have evolved, you know, yeah. that it, it, it's, it, it's reaching out mm -hmm. towards okay. something. Yeah. Maybe play just the end of that.
beautiful. I just think there has to be a little bit more life in the sound. Oh, yeah. Also for the intervals, that you know, the way he'd write to the first, it's, it's all by step, and now we have this small leap. And then again, at that I miss the solidity. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a, a core in the sound. So the, again, a relationship between question and then five, one, right? You can just like on me. So still hopeful, Baba. Hopeful at the beginning. That harmonic underpinning is so utterly different, you know. Mm, that the harmonies uh, in the first full realization are what I would call black and white. Yeah, you know, the yeah, five yeah. one, five one, five one, four, five one. You know, now he adds um, he adds a sort of foreign territories yeah, to it. Yeah. You know, so I th I, I th want the sound. To reflect that now, uh, that there's a there's a new dimension to the sound mm -hmm. as a reflection of, okay, the, okay. of the harmonic language, just from. Yeah, that I would say that without necessarily growing dynamically, that there's something, again, in the quality of sound here, which should already seem to be leading towards the forte that comes now, that, that it's already suggested when you get there, that there's, that, that, again, that whatever development in the sound occurs is somehow makes this the logical yeah. Yeah. next step okay. in the progression. Because we've heard twice before already, the interest is in the new element, which is which is the harmonic element. So I think you're trying to play melody accompaniment too much rather than. We will not miss no matter what you do. a development now also from to you know that it has to to me the the phrase that that inches towards the major has a, pl a pleading yeah, yeah, quality yeah. about it especially again in the repetition of the I think all of the, the repeated yeah, yeah, have yeah. play, but the one in the major somehow especially it's yeah, it's imp imploring yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you play once more? And I, I think you know everything in this in the piece has been piano pianissimo up to this point, and it's been a piano and pianissimo of great intensity, which yeah, means yeah. that something is being held in, yeah, right? It's yeah. not it's not an easy yeah. softness. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a taut, guarded softness. So therefore, when finally you have the forte, I want the feeling of something that has been leashed to be unleashed. You know, 
more um, fervent in the sound. What's more, just from there. Um, Yes, so when you finish that, can you have the expectation that we're again, so that when only at the very last second you have the idea, you know, and then the, this, the, the, I think, really quite extraordinary um, inflexible power of that will be more extreme. And, I, and you need that for then... That mood to be as moving as it can be. That you know, finally, Schubert allows song. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no... Even in the, with the soft music in the first day, there is no song mm -hmm. in it. It's, it's all... The fist is clenched yeah, the yeah. whole time. Once more from... <laughs> I was being suggestive. Uh, Go okay. play it again. Let's see it. Yeah. <laughs> make, make the transition. Uh, wherever you want is fine. <laughs> yeah, but not with no accent there. Because this one does have it. But now, leading to their downbeat. That's the high point of the first one, and then again the, the E flat. So then when you go, I want the feeling of going a level okay. further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the sense of, of vulnerability in it that you know this is so totally assured in it in it in a terrible way assured of something awful you know and then again that I want then the contrast this is a question right oh, yeah, yeah. and also a question and then you know the suggestion that maybe maybe oh, yeah, yeah. in the world there is hope Mm. Yeah. One more time. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> was beautiful, truly beautiful. Um, I was going to say just about all, all of what's coming, that again, this is now yeah, yeah, for the first time from the world of song. And I, you know, so often in Schubert's songs, the piano evokes water, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are you know, probably a hundred examples of it. And I think this is the same thing. You can convey the sense of the sound being in motion. I didn't really do it properly, but... It, you know that there's there's a sense of uh, of a of a uh, line that has no points in it. That it it spins this I, way yeah, yeah, constantly. Yeah. Can you maybe just play? Yeah, 
Yeah, so you know, before then, you know, um, um, it's up and down and up and down. After you hit, the line is now longer, two bars of uninterrupted motion in one direction. If you can sort of feel the that there's, for the first time, just in the phrase length even, on top of everything else, there is a generosity now. It's soft, and in fact, your dynamic is perfect. I'm not asking you to play louder. I'm asking you to play with, a, 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 to, to paint a larger vista uh, yeah, yeah. in your sound. Let me just show Pick out the moments when the left hand suddenly becomes melodic. So this is. This. Yeah, that occasionally, just like just like in the songs, every once in a while, he uh, between the a certain part of the piano line, he'll make sixth or thirds yeah, or yeah, tenths, yeah. and then you know you need a different kind of sound. So slightly more spoken in those moments, and very liquid okay. otherwise. I would say once more. Also in the thumb, ah, especially. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Actually, even more here. You're probably right here. You want the sixth rather than the unison. But here, I oh, I, I missed that a little bit. Less underlining because I think, however, um, as mellifluous as possible, the yo da di do di di do di di, that you know, it's such an incredible contrast with the austerity of this that I think I would disturb the the sort of the the effortlessness of the motion as little as possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once more. This phrase begins mezzo forte. The decrescendo, now pianissimo. First of all, I didn't think that the dynamic difference was enough, but okay. more than that, I we probably talked about this because I, I always talk about it, that dynamics are a, a imperfect means of asking for a character. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's not enough to, to say, I mean, again, I do, did think you needed to have a, diff a bigger difference of volume, mm -hmm. but it's not enough to see mezzo forte and think, I should play this loud. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, he wants a mezzo forte because, and the answer could be many things, I would mm -hmm. say in this case, there's a kind of, with the arrival of the minor, there's a new urgency, mm -hmm. and then when you come down to the pianist, it's not enough to think, I should play this much softer, mm -hmm. but you think, I have to play this much softer because, and and in this case, it's because the modulation is so, so spe spectacular, yeah. right? So yeah, you, I, I think it's, an, it's a, something we need, a muscle we need to develop to the point that it becomes a reflex, that we see any kind of a marking, a tempo indication, a dynamic, a slur, um, a ritardando, and we don't think 
that it means something cut and dry. We think this is a request for a, a communication of a feeling. What feeling would he be asking for by writing these words? Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, that it's all it's musical note with the exception of a note like an A flat is an A flat. It's mm. an A flat. Mm. Beyond that, all musical notation is deeply imperfect. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's no way. I mean, because music is so abstract, there's no way of saying exactly yeah. what you want. You know, so we have to do a lot of guesswork, but it can be educated guesswork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once more from the mezzo forte. <laughs> one I want to feel a development of something the repetition is uh, is insistent yeah, yeah. So there's, there's one aspect of this I think you're not taking uh, full advantage of, mm -hmm. and that's the fact that it is, as many uh, moments in this piece are, remarkably poised between major and minor, right? Okay. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Seems like minor, right? Yeah. Right, and then only it's only finally resolved um, when we arrive in the second theme. Again, this happens again here. Now the thread of the minor is gone. You know, so when I talk about the, the terror mm. and the lyricism, the terror and the tenderness, that's yeah. uh, you know, as good of a, of a tool for feeling the juxtaposition of those qualities yeah, yeah. as possible. So really, when the music darts between those two, really feel what it means okay, okay, to go yeah. from one to the other. Can you play from there? <laughs> Register, you know, the, feel the difference between being here and now up here. Oh, yeah. Schubert loves the shimmer of, yeah, yeah. you know, he set uh, poems that talk about shimmering over and over right. to the to the dis, to the horror of singers who have to say the word shi shi shimmernden or whatever it is in German, which is a horrible word to say. Um, go once again from here to make the the change. Forever spinning. I think part of it comes from uh, having a relaxation in the arm, not ever getting stiff and still, always being. It's it's not a lot of motion, but again, I, I, I forgive me if I've said this already, but obviously, uh, you know, any piano teacher talks about economy of motion, and it is a, indeed a very important principle. It's a yeah. t it's a very hard to play an instrument, so it's a bad idea to waste energy, right, mm -hmm. and to waste motion. But the minimum amount of motion you need is not necessarily just the minimum amount of motion you need to, to play the correct notes. Mm -hmm. You also need a certain amount of motion to make the right kind of sound and the right kind yeah, of yeah. articulation and and the right shape of a phrase, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, when you think, as you should, about how to play in the most efficient way possible, include the idea of shaping the music with your body okay. into yeah. that. Yeah. Once more. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason I, I would love the feeling of a longer line here is because then he, um, oh, the, for the contrast, yeah. Okay. And always an increase and in 
intensity. It, think about it this way. If you say something yeah. four times, mm -hmm. you don't repeat it because you don't really mean it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you repeat it because it really means something. Yeah, if you yeah, say yeah. it once, then okay, you say it a second time, it's because you really want to make your point. A third time, because you're worried nobody is hearing you. So, so you know, the, the repetitions yeah. cannot be perfunctory. The repetitions have to be some kind of intensification. This is one of those places where the triplets become not simply um, space filler, but the, some of them are deeply expressive. Right? So yeah, the moment where, where the uh, triplets imply a harmony that brings tension, mm -hmm. then put, shine a light on them, yeah. Not all triplets were created equal. Beautiful. I would just say that, you know, we have the minor. So I, and, and the suggestion of the minor with the F flat, I would keep the conviction that that's basically where we are until, yeah. because then it brings like a, a relief so extraordinary. Yeah, 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 yeah if, sure. you, if you really delay it. Once more from there. Blossom in the sound. Also, when you played it through, I thought really very beautiful. I just was going to ask that without playing any louder in the left hand, if you can fill the space. And da, 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 that, that, you know, that otherwise it feels a little bit bare, you know. That it's pianissimo, but it is somehow still a theme of an extraordinary generosity, you know. So I, I wouldn't be too sort of boxed in in any way. And sorry, just as a preemptive thing, uh, there's this wonderful moment though in what is a, an aria, then becomes yeah, that's so, and it remains, you know, that so so what it it at that moment it becomes ardent, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once more from. Stop again, but that in in the first bar it's merely filling space, but now we, yeah that that yeah, again again when there's interest in yeah. the the um, accompaniment then you can allow it to participate okay. a little bit more. Also, so much because you have for three bars the two the two voices in conversation, yeah. right? And then they come together. You 
know, there should yeah, be this yeah. fantastic sense of joining mm -hmm. at that moment. Maybe from here. Yeah, and again, so this voice is old news, right? It's Oi. Well, I think the upper one okay. has to be, I don't necessarily know if it has to be more, but it has to be somehow more expressive. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Again, because at least in my hearing of it, it's ardent. It sounds. I, I, I think it should have this sense uh, yeah, of an yeah, outpouring. Yeah. It sounds a little bit regimented yeah, yeah. at the moment. <laughs> now, especially. Yeah, and again, so this is a transition. This is from the ter tenderness to the terror. Yeah. So the difference between the richness of the three note chords and then the, 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 um, oh, sorry, it's oh, not yeah. the, not, not, I played the triplets, which I shouldn't have, yeah. but that the, 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 again, the, the bareness of yeah. the octave, I yeah. think, should do the work of starting to affect ah, yeah, this yeah. enormous right. change for you. Mm -hmm. Play one more time just to make that transition. quite loose. I would say close to the key and with a very sharp motion. Yeah. yeah. One just right there. Very good. Yeah, unfortunately I think we're gonna have to stop. Oh, right. But so that's the the basic idea is that I think these moments, you know, like, you know, which are so unbelievably touching, yeah. they have to be earned, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think that in, in this music, it is the way in which those two qualities mm. can somehow improbably coexist, which makes yeah, yeah. the music so, so uh, you know, extraordinarily powerful. So I think that other side, yeah, the yeah. side that is, that is filled with, um, with dread, I yeah, think you yeah, can yeah. really, you can go even further with it. Beautiful, oh, right. it was really already a very beautiful performance of the piece. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you very much.